Hello, Brad here. Just to say we're super proud that the Friday 5pm podcast is sponsored by the Malt Miller, the UK's best home brew store. We use the Malt Miller for all of our homebrew experiments, as well as tapping them up for advice and binging on their awesome YouTube channel all the time. That's why whenever we release a homebrew video, we put a recipe kit live on the Malt Miller, so you can brew with the exact same amazing ingredients that we did. The same ingredients used by pro brewers. So alongside the Malt Miller's nitro flushed hops, cold stored yeast and milled to order malts, you can pick up recipe kits for our Five Points Best Bitter, Russian River West Coast IPA and now the fastest beer in the world, a hazy session IPA that goes from grain to glass in less than 48 hours. Sign up to their newsletter at tinyurl.com forward slash Malt Miller to get 5% off your first order. With the Malt Miller's amazing customer service and Johnny's 48 hour recipe, You could order the ingredients on a Monday and be drinking the beer by the weekend. Speaking of which, it's Friday. It's 5pm. So enjoy this week's Friday 5pm podcast. Hey, big geeks, if we sound tired, it's because it's the hottest day of the goddamn year. 36 degrees. I heard 37, Johnny. I heard 37. 37? Mmm. I trust your source because I, I, it feels like about 45 to me. We're just not built for this heat in this country. We don't have air conditioning. I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit, but it's friggin' hot. It's like 90-something or other. Boiling. Oh, it's well into the 90s. Scorchio. Well into the 90s. Mm. Yeah, Scorchio. <laughs> That's the official term. Um, so, yeah, I'm sat here in shorts and, and, a, and uh, a sleeveless top, which is not my general look, I can assure you. Um and uh, I've, I've, I've got a, a can of cool box on the go, even though it's probably a little bit early in the day. But screw it. We are it's the coldest thing early. I had in my fridge. Nice. <laughs> um, so you're sitting in a wife beater drinking a beer at 11 a.m. Amen. <laughs> Johnny Redneck. Uh, Garrett. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, well, so I've been working really hard recently, editing together some videos for what we'll talk about in a second. So I'm I'm rewarding myself. It's you know it's only a, a three point five percent beer. It's nothing big. Yeah. Um, I'm also I've been up for absolutely hours because last night at about four a.m. I got woken by my girlfriend's shouting uh, for Ooh. me to wake up. Right. And I woke up and I came to the kitchen, and in the heat of the night. A mini keg of Fuller's ESB had exploded in our kitchen. Oh wow! Full on exploded, like like shards of metal. Whoa! Uh, nail bomb style. Wow! Um, so there there was beer absolutely everywhere. I was mopping for about an hour last night, Fuck. getting it all getting it all sorted. It still smells a bit of beer in my kitchen. Um, and I haven't wiped down our door yet, which looks like I don't know a blood spatter sample from a murder site. Wow. Um, so yeah, I've been up for ages. So I'm very discombobulated about what time of day it is, particularly given that it's 37 degrees out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I forgive you for wearing the uh, the redneck top, um, <laughs> mate. That sounds like horrific and like really dangerous. If you were in there or whoever was in there. Jesus. Yeah, I mean, no, absolutely no shade to Fuller's. Like, I kept it for way too long because I'd, yeah. I'd forgotten that I had it, if I'm honest. Um, so def- this is not on Fuller's. This is on me. Yes. Um, and to be honest, I was just glad that we could we could do a podcast where I tell a bizarre story of something that happened to me <laughs> rather than you doing it. It's a nice reversal. First time ever. Your first time ever. Um, right, let's get into the podcast, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. So, uh, tomorrow, 4pm, uh, live on our YouTube channel, we will be hosting the inaugural Lockdown Craft Beer Festival. So, we've teamed up with We Are Beer, who organise four craft beer festivals around the UK, to host our very own digital version while their, their events can't go ahead. Um, and so, we've been spending all week together, Bradley, which has been nice. Oh, it's um, been great. Filming some content. Where did we go? We've been to McKellar. We've been to Brick. We've been to Five Points. We've done interviews over the the interwebs. Um, we've been all over the place, haven't we, mate? 
Yeah, so yeah, it's been a lot of content, a lot of content to edit. We're hoping uh, most of those videos will become episodes in themselves as well. Um, but yeah, so we've, 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 we visited Brick and did a tour and tasted some sours. We did a, a, a video all about modern bitters with five points. Um, and then we went to the McKellar's new brew pub in London and explored that and had some tasty beer. Very tasty beer. Very tasty beer. Uh, and then we've also got our two sponsors for the festival being sponsored by Canada. Basically, hey, two Canadian companies. Love it. Um, which is yeah, a bit weird as a British podcast, but uh, a British YouTube channel. But hey, we love the Canadians. I think they're they're angling to be leaders of the free world because America currently is just fucking it. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so uh, we've got sponsors Lalamond, uh, who make most of the yeasts um, that you all have uh, from breweries that you all have been uh, drinking from, including uh, Verdant, um, and we're doing a little sponsored post with those two guys coming up. Um, so they've got a little sponsored slot, and then we've also been chatting to Collective Arts, an amazing brewery that sort of what do they do? Sort of combine the worlds of art and yeah. beer. I mean, that's yeah. To put it shortly. They, they they basically have this amazing approach to to can artwork and and just sort of running a brewery, which is kind of counterintuitive. That they they might brew the same beer, but they'll change its label like every three months, um, which which makes them very hard to find on the shelf. I imagine, um, <laughs> but it gives such a platform for amazing emerging artists and, and designers. Um, they pay everyone that, that, that creates the art, um, like a good, a good amount of pay there. They get thousands and thousands and thousands of, of submissions from all around the world. And it's kind of a way of, um, connecting artists networks from, from anywhere. So, the, you know, we were talking to your man from there and, and basically about how it's connected him to people in this country and, you know, specific towns like bristol that have got lots of street artists and things like that and it's it's kind of amazing how you can have you know this brewery out in canada and somehow it touches all these different artists around the world beautiful stuff yeah really amazing global approach to to the art world and to the beer world um so yeah we've got a lovely chat with ryan who's the creative de the director there and is a lucky enough man to live in stowe which oh. is where we're uh, out the alchemist are um, while we're on the topic of collective arts, they're running a competition related to uh, our, our Lockdown Craft Beer Festival um, in which you could win a branded collective arts turntable that it looks as epic as it, as it sounds and sounds as epic as it looks. Um, and there's a link in the descriptions box to this podcast um, where you can just uh, sign up to that. All you have to do is give... Give them your email, so join their mailing list and you'll be entered into that draw for that turntable. Um, and I think possibly London Craft Beer Festival are giving away tickets to their rescheduled version of the festival, which is now the 27th and 28th of November. That's right, that's right. Tobacco Doc as always. Yeah, um, still Tobacco Doc. Yes, it's going to be great. I cannot wait. Yeah, I'm excited for a, a winter version. We've been chatting to Greg, who's, who's one of the founders of those festivals, sort of about how it's going to be a very different vibe, like not this summery necking pints kind of vibe but like a, a sofa and and fairy lights and and acoustic music kind oh. of festival which is probably more my speed if i'm honest uh, <laughs> so i'm looking forward to that um yeah so do join us 4 p.m live on our facebook on we are beers facebook uh, the london craft beer festival facebook that is and of course uh on our youtube channel and the links to all of those are down below you can hit the little bell button and it will give you a reminder when we go live and it's five hours long so if you can't join us at four don't worry there'll be plenty going on even at 8 p.m uh tomorrow night all from little faith in deptford yes. um this week's video bradley was a surprise hit wasn't it it was me I, I mean thirteen thousand views in in 24 hours is is pretty epic well a bit more than 24 hours but yeah let, let, so well yeah 36 hours mm. um let's put put that in context for people when we started lockdown right we mm. were getting around about four thousand views in that time on a new video so we've we've pretty much tripled our audience over lockdown it's good isn't it it's pretty good man. um very excited yeah it's it's dead exciting and we we can't thank you guys enough and we're so glad that we've been providing content that has has excited you guys um it's absolutely sort of changed what we 
can expect from from the the channel in the next couple of months. Like we we've gained four thousand subscribers in the last twenty eight days, which is more than double what we usually get. Which means we're going to hopefully hit a hundred thousand subscribers by Christmas. Oh, it means mate. we're going to hit a million views this year. Um, our our Patreon, which you can still subscribe to for uh, just just one dollar. Um, that's already gone up to its highest point. It's just shy of 1,200. Like, it's been an incredible few months. Yeah, man. I mean, it's uh, all, all, of, all of the support we get from Patreon. Um, that is, that's helping us improve the content we make. It keeps us stocked in beer because, well, surprisingly, we don't get that much free beer. And we, we're, we're massively And what we do get just explodes in our kitchen, bro. Exactly, exactly. So <laughs> we're, we're always choosing what we want to drink. We never really just do a straight review, do we, Johnny? We're not like a boring, like, oh, well, here's a beer, blah, blah, blah channel. We're, we've always got an angle. And, um, I mean, this... you find them boring. I watch them religiously, but that's <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I'm saying yeah. we, we don't stand there for 10 minutes. We're trying to be just, different. We're trying to be different. We're trying to push the envelope a little bit. Um, and all that support allows us to do that, whether it's traveling or hopefully getting, you know, better equipment that can up our production. Um, it's it all massively helps. So thanks, guys. It's amazing. Yeah, bless you. Um, so let's dive into uh, today uh, this week's video, which was uh, cheekily titled "Are you buying your craft beer wrong?" Mm. Um, which I think a lot of people are. So. Um, this video was sort of designed to help people get the best from their bottle shops because I think bottle shops are probably selling more beer than they ever, ever have. So we went through, uh, did the, the journey of your time in a bottle shop. I don't know about you, I spend about half an hour in there every time I go. Um, and just giving you tips on looking out for freshness, so understanding bottled on dates and uh, best befores, looking for key terms that might imply that the brewery knows what kind of beer it's making and uses the right processes, or indeed looking for the bad terms in case they don't know what they're talking about or they're trying to con you. Um, talked a little bit about independence um, and talked about the importance of cold storage as well. Um, so always buying from the fridge if that option is there and encouraging your local box shops to invest in fridges. Yes. Um, and we had, yeah, like we say, so we had 13,000 views in 36 hours, which is phenomenal. Um, and we had a million comments as well, um, most of which um, had a theme, which was, you know, people saying how they choose their beers. And a lot of them, which is something we completely missed on this, is using apps, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, we, I mean, I think it will, be, it will be a video coming up soon, won't it, for sure. Yeah, I mean, most of my responses to them has been like, you're right, we need to, to do a video on how to use beer apps because they're this wonderful resource, you know. Um, I use Google reviews all the time when I'm, you know, picking picking restaurants or, or something like that. Like, I always put a little bit of sway by it. Um, and the same should be true of beer reviews. We'd never say that you shouldn't use them. But there is um, an art, should I say, to using these apps because you have to bear in mind the extreme biases of people out there in the world exactly i mean you've you've got your like haze bros and you know people that their minds are kind of well their eyes are blinkered i would say to to sort of wanting different styles or what they might expect from a beer that isn't you know the style that they that they love and that they dream about and they might sort of be overly critical of it because it's you know not what's in their head that they that they that they're after because they've picked a totally different beer to what they're sort of um, hoping for. Uh, so it's kind of it's an interesting one, is it? It's a minefield, Johnny. Yeah, it is, and 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 I think we've got some some tips and some skills that you can use to sort of see through the biases and 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 understand exactly. Um, what these ratings are saying. Um, I've just gone onto the Untapped website and, and looked up like the absolute top rated beers in the world. Um, you have to scroll down. Let me see. Let me be exact. Uh, uh, um, are you looking for okay, PU? Oh, you actually. Oh, no, there we go. Right. So you have to scroll down 25 beers to get something that isn't an IPA or an Imperial Stout. There you go. Or a mead. There's lots of meads up there. Bloody meads, um, eh? 
And the first one that comes up that isn't an Imperial Stout Mead or IPA is a barley wine. Wow. So, you know, the, the bias against um, lagers, against... Oh, there, here we go. The top Lambic there, that's about 30 down. Oh, but that's out of production. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's really tough to know um, how balanced these reviews are going to be. Um, and just to give a really quick explainer of how I do it, I actually don't use Untapped for that. I use Untapped occasionally to log beers so that I remember them and I can go back and refer to see if I've had it. But if I'm looking for information on breweries, I always, always use Rate Beer. Mm. Ownership aside, it is owned by AB InBev. The the great thing that uh, Rate Beer has that the other apps don't is they adjust the score according to style. Yes, so, so this takes you'll out see... some of that fanat- fanaticism. Exactly that, yeah. So, so like, say, Augustina Hellers, which is a, a brilliant beer, that will have, it's got a score of, you know, like 40 out of 100 on uh rate beer but then once it's adjusted for style it goes up to over 90 wowza so it's a really handy tool for you to go right i love lagers why does everyone think lagers are shit but if you go to rate beer you realize that um within that smaller segment of data you can actually pick out which the best lagers are nice um so yeah, we'll definitely do a video digging into that and talking talking about how to get the most from these apps and make sure that you're not sort of missing out on great beers. Because we had had a comment from from a guy called Sed 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 or Ked Ked, not quite sure, saying um, when I'm in a shop and have something interesting to hand that I know nothing about, I check Untapped. In my experience, everything over three point five percent is enjoyable. Now that's cool, uh, but you know I'd hate the idea that he would put down something at three point four. Because things like like Pilsen Raquel is three point four, so you know if he didn't know what that was, he'd put it down and he'd miss out on one of the best lagers in the world. And that would be true of lots of delicious lagers from the UK, like all the best guys that we know. Probably probably Notch, if you look at their lagers, and we you know we regard them as the best lagers outside of the Czech Republic. Um, I'm sure they don't have many beers that that are over three point five because of the styles that they're making. Yeah, it's crazy. The bias is just insane on lager, isn't it? Really. Um, we kind of wanted to do a, a thing a while ago about having justice for lager, and I think it still stands. You know, like why, why? Uh, it's it. I think it's just so intrinsic that it's kind of pissy stuff that your your idiot, you know, older uncle or whatever might drink, and lads, and you know, kind of yobby culture. But lager, honestly, it's like. The, the 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 most amazing thing to drink when it's thirty seven degrees outside, um, well whatever temperature. Oh, I, whatever I, I mean, temperature. I've, I've reached for a lager today, but I'd reach yeah. for a lager in winter, summer, oh, spring. Big time, like out in the Czech Republic, drinking it at like Christmas time. Maybe a dark guy. Whoa, beautiful stuff with some with some greasy sausages. Some of those crazy sausages they have over there. Or some goulash. Oh my god, dreams! Stuff dreams are made of. I've just looked up the standard, which is Notch's Czech Pilsner mm. at four point four, like a Pilsner Raquel sort of homage, and it, it's got three point eight. Whoa! Um, if I were rating that, I'd give it. I'd probably give it five. Yeah, it is. It I think is I think it's one of the best lagers in the world. Yeah. It's um, so yeah, so definitely sounds like we need a video, um, all around that. Um, I saw saw a really interesting comment. I, I couldn't dig it out in time for the podcast. Um, oh no, no, no! Here it is. Alex C. Wild um, said that he uses the beer apps, but he's uh, tracked down uh, like influencers, friends, people he's seen on on Facebook forums and stuff. Followed them on Untapped when he recognizes and sort of respects their palate, and then used their specific ratings. Hmm, that's a good way. Which is. Intense, but <laughs> a great idea. Sort of stalking to get your data, nice. um, and I think I think that's probably more accurate than than many of the reviews you'll get on the the more niche styles. Um, so yeah, so we'll definitely do a video on that, and maybe a video. We had lots of people asking about buying online, both you know subscription clubs and um, just just online bottle shops, because you can't see the dates, you don't know whether it's cold stored, all this stuff. So we can we can give you some info on that as well for sure. Definitely. Um, 
Yeah, so uh, next week, we don't actually know what the video is going to be. It will probably be one of the ones from the show. We'll see which one is best received and what people want to see. Um, but if you want to see next week's video, then all you have to do is tune in at 4 p.m. tomorrow. Um, it should be really exciting, right? We've, we've got some cool new branding. There's going to be lots of live tastings, live guests, um, uh, and, and uh, some foodie stuff going on as well. So it's... Mm. I'm I'm really really nervous, but really excited because technically it's a big jump up from our usual live shows. But um, I think it's going to be pretty magic. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a full on day. I've just got to try and keep my head on and not get steaming drunk. Uh, so I'm hoping there's some great food coming up, and uh, we have got to stay hydrated, mate. Cause it's going to be bloody scorchio again. Yeah, so if you're at home and you're like, I don't want to stay inside and watch TV, uh, watch the TV, take the TV outside. That's yeah. the joy of streaming, and you can treat it like we're just the radio on while you're barbecuing, having water fights, reading, drinking. Nice. Um, that'd be that'd be really lovely to know that we're tuning straight into the gardens of of a nation literally <laughs> melting. Um, I mean, we say this like probably lots of our listeners on in, on the west coast of American stuff get these temperatures all the time, so we're just being idiots, but. Um, yeah Uh, we'd love loads of interaction as well if you are going to watch so please do comment let us know what you're drinking let us know what you're eating let us know what you think of the the videos we're flashing up and the tastings in the breweries we'd really really appreciate that and 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 get a bit of a community going um around what has been a pretty stressful uh but very exciting week so Mm. we're hoping this could be a format we can take forward and and grow definitely Um, yeah, so we'll see. Uh, I think that's all our news for this week, Bradders. Uh, we need to wind well, to rest up yes. after my late late night slash early start, um, mm. and Pick out you need to stay hydrated and fill yourself with carbs. Exactly, exactly, mate. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to see you in a few hours anyway because we've got to prep for the, uh, tomorrow. But um, mate, it's been a pleasure as always having a chat. And uh, absolutely, can't wait to see you in your wife beater uh, <laughs> <laughs> shortly. I might put a t-shirt on. Okay. I don't want to inflict that view upon don't, the people. Don't of do London. it on my account, mate. You know you've got to get those <laughs> uh, those arm guns out sometimes. That's true. Sun's out, guns out, as um, lots of horrible people say. Right, guys. <laughs> hopefully, we'll catch you at four p.m. tomorrow. This has been Friday, five p.m. Uh, we love you guys, and we will see you live tomorrow and next Wednesday for our usual upload. Cheers. The Bubble Podcast is brought to you by the nerds behind YouTube's Craft Beer Channel. Head to youtube.com slash the Craft Beer Channel to watch this week's video and over 400 more exciting episodes. If you love what we do, please, please, please do subscribe and even join our Patreon at patreon.com slash craft beer channel. Love and beer.